Welcome, it's Ashley from Demystifying Your Health. Thank you for joining me today. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about depression. We all have moments in life where we feel unhappy or sad, and this is completely normal. What happens though if these feelings last for a long period of time, and all of a sudden you're losing interest in everyday activities that you once enjoyed? Well, then you might be depressed. So how do you know for sure what is done to treat depression and can it be prevented? Let's find out. So depression is a mood disorder and it actually affects a large amount of people ranging from children to adults to elderly individuals. So if you're experiencing any of these symptoms here we're going to talk about, you're not alone. The exact cause of depression is unknown, but it's thought to be related to biological differences, brain chemistry, hormones, and inherited traits. A combination of these factors all play a role in the development of depression. And the symptoms vary significantly, but most people usually have some variation of this, which are feeling sad or hopeless, angry outbursts, irritation over small matters, loss of interest in normal activities, sleep disturbances, lack of energy, changes in appetite, anxiety, slowed speech, thinking, or body movements, feeling worthless, trouble concentrating, unexplained physical problems, misuse of alcohol or drugs, thoughts of death or suicide, or suicide attempts. And certain things increase your chances of having depression. One of them is just being female. Another is personality traits like low self-esteem, uh, being overly self-critical. Obviously traumatic or stressful events like abuse, the loss of a loved one, a family history of depression or other mental health disorders. If you have a chronic illness, if you have another mental health disorder, or even certain medications can increase your risk of having depression. So if you've recently started a medication and noticed that you have any of these symptoms, make sure you talk to your doctor because it could be a side effect of that medicine. So as you can see, depression can have a huge impact on your life here. And that's why you might not necessarily be aware of it, but if once you become aware of it, it's so important to seek treatment. Obviously, if you're having any ideas of suicide or suicide attempts, this is an emergency and you need to be seen immediately. If you know of someone who is suicidal, don't leave them alone and help them get to the nearest emergency room. And this doesn't necessarily mean taking them yourself, but calling 911 and staying with that person until the emergency personnel arrive. There are several different types of depression. Some of them are anxious, distressed, mixed features, melancholic features, atypical features, psychotic features, catatonia, peripartum onset, and seasonal pattern. The treatment really depends on the type, and this is why it's so important to be seen by a doctor because they're gonna help you determine what type you have and then what treatment is the best for you. There's two main components of treatment, medication and psychological counseling. There are many different kinds of medication, and this is why knowing what type of depression you have is important because different medicines work better for certain types. Also, each person's individual. So you might need to try a few of the medicines to try to find the right one that works best for you. And this is where being with your doctor, they're gonna help you determine this. And the other big component of medicine is you don't wanna stop taking it suddenly. Oftentimes when people are depressed, they start taking medicines, they see an improvement. So they think they're feeling better and then they stop taking their medicine. And then they go right back into their depression. And this is why you wanna stay on the medicine, don't stop it without talking to your doctor, and then they will help you devise a plan for this. The other big side effect with medicine is that when people, if they're suicidal, once they start taking medicine, they start having more energy. And this right there then gives them the energy to carry out their plan. So that's why when people first start medicines, doctors monitor them very closely for this. And this is where the psychological counseling component comes in. And this is absolutely critical because this is where you're gonna be able to talk about how you're feeling, why you're feeling this way and learn tools that are going to help you cope so that way while you're even taking the medicine you're learning tools that are going to help you be able to function on a day-to-day -day basis 
This doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to stop medicine at some point. It could. That's something you would need to talk to with your doctor about. But the psychological counseling is such a key component because you need to have these tools in order to be able to understand why you're depressed and then how to best cope with it. So this treatment plan for depression is very detailed, but your doctor will definitely be able to help you with this. When it comes to depression, you might not be able to prevent having the condition. However, there are things that you can do to help reduce the number of episodes that you do have. Key thing here is understanding what depression is and how it affects you. Next, you need to know what your warning signs are of an episode coming on. And then, seek treatment as soon as possible. You also want to take steps to reduce stress and find ways to relax. So this means participating in activities or hobbies that you enjoy. Getting rid of things in your life that cause you stress. If there's been a treatment plan devised by your doctor and you, make sure you're sticking with it. Because this is going to be key to helping prevent new episodes of depression from occurring. If you're feeling you need the extra support, reach out to family and friends. Let them know what's going on. Or you can join a support group. Obviously, these are other individuals who experience depression in some form, so they can easily understand what you're going through and help you work through an episode. All of these things together will reduce the chances of you having frequent episodes, which obviously is great because you want to be able to live a depressed free life. One other important thing that I want to address before we conclude today's video is that if you are feeling suicidal, obviously either call 911, but another resource is the National Suicide Prevention Helpline, and that is the 1-800-273-TALK, or 8255. This number is incredibly important because obviously if you're feeling that you need help, call this number and you'll be able to speak to someone. If you're a veteran, call the same number and press 1 for the Veterans Crisis Line. Remember, even if you're depressed, you are not alone. There's always someone there willing to listen and help. Depression is a very serious illness. And it's something that requires treatment from a medical professional. If you're feeling depressed, please know that you're not alone and seek help. Thank you for joining me today. If you have questions, comments, I'd love to hear from you, love to answer them. Please put them below, send me a message. If you found this to be helpful, please like, subscribe, share. Until next time, stay healthy.